Hey y'all, welcome back to Super Geeked. I'm Victoria and today I have a little bit of a different video. So it's not a strange occasion for me to get a text message or a phone call from someone inquiring about antiques that they've either purchased or inherited or they just want to know more about. I get them all the time because I have been a longtime collector myself but also a reseller or dealer if you're in the antique world. So I have some knowledge base and a lot of my friends and family will contact me for information. So I got a phone call from a good friend of mine who had inherited some pottery. Now, I didn't think anything of it because like I said, this is a normal occasion for me, but I was already planning on meeting up with her. I had not seen her in a bit. So the first part of this video, I'm going to show you what happened when I went to go see the pottery. Y'all, it was bonkers. And I can't wait to show it to you. It's also going to lead into a video that's going to be coming out probably next week on American Pottery. Um, but I went over there not knowing what she had, how much she had. Um, honestly, I didn't really think much of it. I figured she probably got a few pieces and just wanted to know what they were. But then later that day, uh, if you've been watching my channel for a bit, you know I have some friends in the reselling community and one of those resellers is Heroin Bob from Bob Buys. She and Gorgeous flew in for an epic reseller weekend with myself and Alicia from Murrayed Life. It was a lot of fun. They spent, I believe, five days here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast hanging out with us. I have a three-part series on this channel of those if you want to go watch them. But since I met her in real life for the first time in July, I have now seen her two other times. One was on my road trip with my family. We stopped in Colonial Williamsburg, Virginia and spent some time with her. And then she took a road trip to Texas and on the way back, they drove through the Mississippi Gulf Coast and I met with her in Gulfport at the largest Goodwill in the Southeast at 60,000 square feet. And Bob and I did some thrifting and I'm gonna show you the haul from that. Bob is also going to have a video out today where she's gonna share what she picked up at the Goodwill in Gulfport, Mississippi. So be sure you go check out her video after mine. I'll have it linked below. So this video will be about pottery, American pottery, and it will also be about thrifting. <laughs> Two of the things that I get super geeked about. So if you're interested in seeing what happened this magnificent day in my life, then stay tuned. All right. So first we're going to roll the footage of me going over to um, this house that was where my friend was going to show me some pottery and it turned into this craziness. So I'm going to show you a picture of what I ended up taking home. One of my largest mid-century collections that I have, and by the way, if you don't know, mid-century is 1945 to 1965. So it's the middle of the last century. And mid-century modern was a design type during that period. So post-World War II, this was a period of design that I highly love and enjoy. My house is filled with collections of mid-century items. And one of my largest collections is my American Pottery. So American Pottery, I'm going to do a video coming up, hopefully next week, that I'm going to talk about American Pottery and I'm going to start with the queen bee of American Pottery, McCoy. So I don't want to get too deep in this video about McCoy and American Pottery, but when I showed up at this house, I'm about to show you, it was nuts. She kept coming and coming with this pottery. And after the footage, I'm going to show you a couple pieces that I have. I am going to sell some for her. Um, I don't normally do consignment, but I am going to do it for her because she gave me a great deal on the pieces that I purchased. And so I don't mind doing it. <laughs> OMG y'all. So stopped by an undisclosed person's home and look at all of this uh, American pottery, the majority of which is McCoy. 
and in pristine condition. A couple of them, like this one has a chip. There's a couple that have like chips or cracks, but wow, y'all, I about died when I saw this. And she's got two more bins of it. What? OMG, she just brought me another one. What? What is going on? And some of these are, I believe, really old McCoys, so we're just kind of sorting through them. obsessed with Russell Wright. This one is chipped, but if you look on the bottom, okay, it's signed Bauer, which is actually Russell Wright in the 1930s. And she's got this piece and then this one right here. Unfortunately, they're both broken, probably because the pottery is so old and brittle, but here is the Bauer sign on the bottom. Holy moly, look at this umbrella stand. Wow. It's not Mark McCoy, but I believe it is McCoy. Check it out, y'all. What? My mystery person, I think, is going to keep this, which I encouraged her to do because it's stunning. Look what this is. Uranium glass. What? She is killing me over here. Seriously, guys. What? Display of pottery. Look at all this. What? I told y'all it was crazy. I did not expect that. The first thing I saw when I came into her house was the McCoy Jardine pot. It actually has a quilted look to it, along with a floral foliage pattern around the rim of the planters. They came in multiple sizes, which I'll talk about in my American Pottery video, specifically McCoy. But I wanna share with you some of the pieces that I got and I love. First that I fell in love with was this two set. It's in a turquoise. Isn't that beautiful, y'all? So these look like McCoy, but I have not been able to directly show that they are McCoy. McCoy, McCoy pots are not always marked. For the most part, they are, but there's a period where they were not. This is marked USA, which tells me it's probably just American pottery in the style of McCoy, which is fine. This is also a compliment to the Jardine pot that she kept, and it is clearly marked McCoy. You can also tell it's McCoy. This is one of their most treasured patterns. So normally you see the, the planters, the big round planters. This is a matching vase that would go with it, the handled vase. I am going to probably sell these for her. This is a set of pink, um, these are called the ribbon vase. As you can see, there's like a, a ribbon on the front and the back. And these are clearly marked Made in USA McCoy and they're in great condition. And look forward to this video because when I do show what I got this day, but also talk about McCoy pottery and the history of McCoy pottery, I'm going to share with you comps. So this isn't just a collector's video. This is also if you want to deal or resell in the American pottery market, they are highly, highly, highly collectible. I know because I'm a big collector. <clears throat> this is also a McCoy that is not marked. So it is marked USA, but there is no McCoy markings on this, but this is McCoy. It is the Peacock. It does have a tiny chip here. <clears throat> but I am keeping this for my own collection. I have a collection of American pottery, like I said, but I also have a collection of wall pockets. So this beauty is going with my collection. I love this piece. This is a style that was very popular in the 1980s, but this is actually much older. It's from the 60s. This is a large, as you can see from the size of my head, <laughs> a very large piece. And it is 
actually um, just U.S. pottery. This is not McCoy. McCoy did have, this is called the fan, okay? This is the style this is in. McCoy did have a fan style that has a piece that comes out here and here that's decorative. Um, and so this is in a McCoy style-ish, not really the McCoy actual style, but the fan style is very McCoy, but it is a lot sleeker of a design. And the last piece I want to show you that I picked up this day was this beautiful piece. Now I got this in pink also, but um, you will see in American pottery that there are sometimes imperfections you see right there. This is not a chip. This is where the glaze did not adhere to the pot. So this would not devalue the item. It's just a defect in the actual glaze. Uh, this one also is marked McCoy. And so like I said, I got it in the mint color and in the pink. So now I'm gonna show the footage of after I left the collection, I was riding high on life, so excited about the new pieces I got and that uh, I picked up to resell for my client slash friend. And then I met, went to go meet Bob at the largest Goodwill in the Southeast. So here's the footage from Shopping with Bob, and then I'm going to come back and show you the haul. Uh, I'm at Goodwill, but there's some people with me. Who is this? Hello. Look at my bangs, look great. So that thrift store I've only been to now like four times, I think, and I never find tons of stuff, but I was just going to hang out with Bob. I mean, really, that was the whole purpose because she lives very far from me and I don't know when the next time that I'm going to see her is. I'm very fortunate that I've been able to see her three times in the last month, month and a half, which is totally wild and bizarre to me, but it, it just happened. So we did go thrifting and I'm going to show with you, share with you what I picked up. I picked up clothing to resell and then one American pottery piece. How wild is that? So the first thing that I got, and by the way, I happen to get a lot of vintage this day, um, is this really cute dress. It is red and it's like a Dalmatian print. It's got this ruffled mock neck collar and... It is about midi length. It has an elastic waistband and the brand is Flora Kung, but I thought it was a precious little dress. It is a uh, 1980s. It has shoulder pads, probably early 1980s. This is a beautiful wool plaid pencil skirt or straight skirt. It is by Pendleton size 14. And it is a combination of virgin wool and lamb's wool. So it's 100% wool with a mixture of different kinds of wool. I also like that it has this one pocket here, um, but the colors y'all are just awesome. Very jewel toned. The only modern piece of clothing I got to resell was a dress that Bob found. And it is this uh, black dress that has a shell underneath and a sheer top layer. This is Cabby, and it's the new label Cabby. I like selling Cabby. Cabby definitely has a following. I probably would expect to get between 30 and 40 for that dress, uh, but thank you, Bob, for that. Just to note, if you're starting in vintage, one thing that's really good to start with it 
you know, you don't have to have specific brands with vintage. This is just uh, the brand Savannah, which is not anything super special, but something you can start to look for is vintage blazers. I do really well in fall and winter selling vintage blazers. And this is one of those styles. They, um, it is wool. It looks like it would be like a Pendleton, but it's not. Very nice quality. It was made in El Salvador. Uh, it is it is a wool blend, so it's a majority wool with a polyester, little polyester in it. It is probably late 80s, early 90s. But I find that girls like to pair these oversized blazers with a graphic tee and high rise jeans. Uh, is a really cool look that is going to be back this season. So if you wanna get your feet wet with vintage but aren't sure what to get, I definitely recommend going and finding some fun and funky oversized blazers because I generally get 40 to $50 for those and it doesn't matter what the brand is. Okay, last piece I picked up this day. As I said, I did pick up one piece of American pottery. <laughs> Little funny story to go with this. Um, well, let me show you the piece first. This is it. It is a vase. It is footed. This is called a foot. When you have the bottom part here, it has a long monstrance leaf or another kind of leaf. There is a flaw on the back here. I don't know if it was damaged and repaired, but it doesn't matter. The front looks fine and I'm keeping this, so it's not for resale. And then it has this sort of like lily shaped top. So it's like an abstract flower. It has the stem, the leaf, and then the flowers back here is what it is. So on the bottom, it's hard to make it out, but it does say USA and there's some numbers. Um, but I wanted to know if, um, if I could figure out who the maker of this was. A lot of times these pottery pieces, if they don't have a marking on the bottom, it's because when they were originally sold, they had a sticker on that uh, said who the maker was. When I get into my American Pottery video, I'll show you some of my planters that still have the sticker on it so you can see what that looks like. So I used uh, our trusty friend Google Lens and it was pretty funny. So I know this is an odd shaped vase, but literally first came up some adult toys. <laughs> Pretty sure this isn't an adult toy. Um, then some handbags came up when I redid the Google Lens. Pretty sure this isn't a handbag. And then lastly, I was getting a uterus. <laughs> so my Google Lens was not sure what the heck this was. Uh, I had a wide range. Um, if I get a chance, I'll put it up on TikTok and on Reels so you can see how funny it was. Yeah. Uh, Still don't know who the maker is of this piece, but like I said, again, it's going in my collection. So that's it for today's video. I know it was a little different than I normally do because normally you're seeing unboxings and hauls and what's sold, but this is going to lead into my video next week where I pick up on my mid-century series and I'm going to talk about American pottery and we're going to start with McCoy. So I'll get to teach you a little bit about McCoy. I'll get to show you what resale value is for McCoy and what you can keep your eye out for. And also just different styles in case you decide you want to start collecting these beautiful pieces for your own home. Bob will have a video out today of her footage she took. I think she took a tiny bit of footage in the thrift store. Maybe not. But she'll definitely have a haul of what she picked up in Mississippi so head on over to her channel. I'll have her video linked below for you. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you'll consider subscribing to my channel if you aren't already subscribed. Be sure to hit that bell notification so you'll know when my American Pottery video goes up. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up on the way out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, y'all.